What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is episode six of building a $20 sneaker collection. In this series, I'm attempting to build an entire sneaker collection filled with grails, retros, collectibles, and at the end of the series, buy a pair of Nike mags. And if you're new to this series, that might sound completely impossible. In fact, when I started this series, I kind of thought that it was. But with a little bit of hard work and some thrifting, we've been able to turn $20 into just over $198. We started with just $20, started buying sneakers at Goodwill, then flipping them and slowly building up our sneaker collection and flipping that, so that over time we're able to have a sneaker fund and a sneaker inventory. So if this is your first time watching any of the videos in this series, I definitely recommend starting out with the first episode by clicking the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. And of course, as always, I wanna give a huge thank you to Retro Rick for inspiring this series. If you guys wanna check out his $10 game collection, I've also left a link to that in the description below. But with all that being said, let's jump right into it. So the first place we're gonna stop by this week is Plato's Closet because Plato's Closet has been good to me recently and I'm hoping the luck will continue. So the first pair that I find is this pair of black Adidas Continentals. I don't know why I see them everywhere. I've seen them at Marshalls and at Burlington's and at Goodwill's and at Plato's Closets, but for some reason they just must not be as popular as they used to be, but not a bad looking sneaker. It's even brand new, which is kind of crazy. Then I found this pair of white and green Adidas Samoas. It's a nice looking pair of sneakers, but nothing crazy. I just like the colorways. After that, I actually found a Tupac t-shirt, which I thought was pretty sick. I was like, dang, should I grab this? It was only seven bucks. I'm not really a huge Tupac fan. I just thought the graphic was sick, so I considered it. But then I found this pair of foam posits, Nike foam posits, in this just really awful red and white colorway. I forget what the actual name of this sneaker is, but people call it a lot of things that I'm not gonna say on video, but it's just the worst foam posit ever. And the problem was, this shoe was priced at 150 bucks, and this was a kid's size, a youth size, not a men's size. $150, I don't think it even resells for that much. I don't think, <laughs> it's just crazy to me. It really blew my mind, and the shoe is worn. It's not like extremely heavily worn, but it's definitely worn with a little bit of heel drag. No way I was going to pay $150 for these. I probably wouldn't even pay $40 for these. I'd grab these for maybe $20, but that's the extent of it. Then I found this pair of Jordans. This kind of looks like a 5 and a 7 sort of mixed together. I'm not exactly sure what the name of this Jordan is. It's obviously some sort of combo Jordan, not something that I was too interested in. If it was priced well, I might have grabbed it, but I don't think it was. I think it was priced at around $50, bucks, and I just don't see any resale value in this shoe. Maybe I'm wrong. It just really wasn't a shoe that I was willing to take a risk on. Next up, we found a pair of PGs. Nice looking pair of sneakers. A little too pricey for me. Um, it's not something that I think really will sell. If I could grab it for like 10 bucks, easy cop, but for anything more than that, not really something I need. So after reading some of the comments in my last video, I decided to go back and check if the Pharrell tennis shoes were still there. And the good news was they were, and they're actually in really great condition. The outsole is a little bit dirty, but that's about it. The rest of the shoe almost looks like it hasn't been worn. It's kind of nuts. So I decided, you know what? I'll grab them. They're not too badly priced and it should be a relatively easy flip, I'm hoping. Next, I found a pair of Adidas NMDs. Now, this was in the women's section, but I believe it's a men's size, just a small men's size. It's this pair of dark navy NMDs in really good condition. The outsole is a little bit dirty, but the boost is in nice condition. And it's actually a really nice colorway. I really like this shade of blue a lot. Now, NMDs aren't as popular as they used to be. I mean, if I had found this like three years ago, the shoe would have flown off shelves. In fact, it probably wouldn't even be at Plato's Closet. But it's a nice looking pair of sneakers. And in my opinion, it's worth picking up because I think these two sneakers together will be an easy flip, hopefully. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so first stop of the week, of course, it was Plato's Closet after the insane success of last week. Unfortunately, today we didn't find too, too much. However, I still did spend 40 bucks and buy two things, so it was somewhat successful. And the first thing I grabbed was this pair of NMDs. It was in the women's section, but it's actually a men's pair, just a size six for 20 bucks, and it's in surprisingly good condition. I was actually looking at some of the uh, the sold comps on NMDs that were similar to this. I didn't have time to actually look up the, the SKU number on this one, but they were going for like 40 to 60. I'm thinking I'll probably get something like hopefully 40, 45 maybe, hopefully more, but uh, we'll list this tonight. And then the other thing that I picked up was this pair of Adidas Pharrell Tennis Hues. This is a pair that I actually saw last week and I didn't pick up, mainly because I just didn't think that there was really uh, much profit to be made there, but I ended up looking up the price between last week and this week, and while it's not an incredible price, I think I can sell these for probably about 40, so there is profit to be made, and I think it should be a relatively quick seller because it is a Pharrell. So for that reason, I picked it up. We spent 40 bucks, we got NMDs and Pharrells. Pretty nice Adidas haul today, and I think I'm gonna end off the day by hitting up the Goodwill, so hopefully there's something there, but it's like late in the day. I usually go first thing in the morning, so uh, 
Hopefully it's not all gone, but I don't have my hopes too high. So at Goodwill, there was actually a pretty decent selection. I was surprised, and what really blew me away the most was the fact that we were finding retro Jordans again at Goodwill. So the first pair that I found was this pair of Air Jordan 5 Oreos from 2013. This was a youth size, and unfortunately it wasn't in great condition. In fact, it's in pretty rough condition but the price wasn't bad. I figured even though it's in rough shape and it might take a little while to sell, it's still a pair of retro Jordans. It should still move at some point. Then I found this pair of sock darts, which I was actually surprised to find. I decided not to grab it because I don't think sock darts really have the appeal that they used to have. If this had been the fragment sock darts, I definitely would have grabbed, but I think they were just a regular pair. And so because of that, decided to leave them, but not a bad pair of sneakers and a surprising find at Goodwill. Then I found a pair of shoes that really blew my mind, and that was the Air Jordan 1 Mid Fat purple anthracite. Now this is a shoe that came out years ago, I think maybe 2011, 2012. Came in all purple with a purple elephant print Nike swoosh. Definitely an interesting looking pair of sneakers, but for the price, I had to grab it because I figured I could at least resell it for 20 to 30 bucks, maybe 40 if I'm lucky. But man, I'm, I'm really surprised to have found Air Jordan 1s at Goodwill. So uh, I'm kind of speechless. I didn't expect to find anything at Goodwill, and we found two pairs of Jordans. One pair of youth Jordans, I believe these are the Oreo 5s, from 2013 for $5.49 in decent condition, better condition than the uh, breads we found last week. I can't believe the fact that we're finding retro Jordans at Goodwill. I mean, to be fair, they are use sizes, but still, that's crazy. For $5.49? I don't know how much I can get for these, but definitely more than $5.49. <laughs> That's crazy. They are a little yellowed, but uh, I think they'll still sell, honestly. But then the other pair that I picked up was even crazier. It's my first pair of Air Jordan. That's not true. We got the Air Jordan 1s off the sneakers app last week, but the first organically found pair of Air Jordan 1s in a Goodwill or a Plato's Closet or something like that. It's a pair of Air Jordan 1 mids. I'm not sure exactly what colorway this is. Um, I think it's probably from 2012, 2011. I have no idea, but we got it for $10.49. I can't believe this. What the hell? This is crazy. Um, what size is it? I think it's a size maybe 10 or 11. Not 100% sure. 11 and a half. So it's not the best size in the world, but for 10 bucks, it's a Jordan 1. I mean, Jordan 1s fly off shelves. So I am just so, so stoked that I got this pair. I can't believe it. This has been the most insane, like, random Goodwill Play-Dohs trip I've ever had. That's crazy. And I think I've also learned that going to Goodwill first thing in the morning is not always the best time to go because they haven't put everything out yet. So after spending $40 at Plato's Closet and then $16 because we rounded up a checkout at Goodwill, um, I believe we spent 56 bucks, which means that we're about at $142 down from 198, which is not bad because I think we have a lot of potential profit here. Plus we have all the other sneakers that we haven't sold yet from last week. So man, we've got some good inventory. I'm pretty stoked on this. It's kind of crazy, but uh, yeah. On to the next one. Later on in the day, I decided to hit up Burlington and Ross because they're right next to each other. And the first stop was, of course, Burlington. Now, Burlington has been very hit and miss for me. I don't think I've even grabbed anything from Burlington. I did find this pair of New Balances, which looked really nice, but not for 40 bucks. Just gonna leave them there. There just really wasn't much at Burlington. There was a lot of stock, but there was really only a couple pairs of cleats. Like this is a pair of, I'm assuming, track running cleats, maybe. I have no idea what those are, honestly. The one thing that I did find kind of interesting was this pair of cleats, I guess football cleats, that look kind of like Nike Dunks. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is behind these. I don't know if they're worth anything. I couldn't even find the price on them. And I just figured, I don't know if it's worth the risk. I'm gonna leave them and uh, I hope I made the right choice. Right next door was a Ross, so I decided to stop by, and again, it was pretty well stocked. I mean, there were some holes on the wall, but nothing crazy. Unfortunately, there wasn't really anything good in stock. There was this pair of Adidas, I don't know what they are, they kind of look like top 10s, but they're definitely not top 10s, and just not something I, I feel like I need, because I don't think they'll move at all. Of course, I also had to check out the youth wall, because Retro Rick suggested it, and also because, of course, that's where the Nike Mars Yard 2.5s were found a couple weeks ago. I haven't found any, obviously. And then, surprise, 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 another pair of Adidas Continentals. They are everywhere. I don't understand it. The colorway in the shoe is nice, but I just don't think this is any value, so I'm just gonna leave it here for now. Later that day, I ended up selling three different pairs of sneakers, which I was stoked on. The first pair we sold was a pair of Nike Hirachis that I picked up from Goodwill last week for $5.49. And I ended up selling them for $19 because honestly, they weren't in that good of condition. I tried to clean them up with Rejuvenator, but they were pretty heavily worn down and Rejuvenator can't clean up heel drag. So this shoe I had to price pretty low, but it did move relatively quickly, which I was happy about. And after fees and shipping and all that sort of good stuff, I was able to add $16.82 
cents back into the sneaker fund. Also on the same day, we ended up finally selling that pair of Nike Epic React 2s, which was one of the first pairs that we picked up from Plato's Closet. I bought this pair for $20. It was in excellent condition. I think it was a size 11 and a half, so it was a little bit harder of a size to sell. And I know it didn't sell for much. It ended up selling for $28, which is not a great profit at all. It's a gross profit of $8. But the reason I had to sell it for that price is because I just couldn't move them quickly enough and uh, I just had to accept an offer. So the offer was 28 bucks. I went with that. And then after fees and shipping, we were able to add $25.70 back into the sneaker fund, which is not amazing. It's a $5.70 profit, but it's not too bad. It's better than nothing. And then the final shoe that was sold, which is by far the best sale that we've had so far, were the Phoenix Suns Air Jordan 8s. Now this pair we bought for $25 at Plato's Closet in a size 13, and we ended up selling them for $120, which is an insane profit. It really blew my mind that we were able to sell them for that much. I mean, I wish every shoe that I got I could sell for that much and honestly as you'll see later on in the video I think I need to be a little bit more careful about my buying I think I need to look for more deals like this and not really just splurge but honestly one of the best sneaker pickups I've had yet in fact it probably is the best and after fees and shipping we were able to add hundred and twenty two dollars and seventeen cents back into the sneaker fund which is an insane profit off a twenty five dollar buy cost so we just dropped off all the packages that we sold last night at the post office it was three different packages and the craziest part we went from a hundred $142 in the sneaker fund all the way up to like $309, which is absolutely insane, especially from three packages. I think the winner of, of the pickups recently has been that pair of Air Jordan 8s. That pair sold for like 120 bucks, which is crazy, and uh, really, really helped out the sneaker fund. So now we got 300 bucks for the first time ever, so I am beyond stoked. And not only that, we also have like six other pairs of sneakers still in the inventory, so we still have more potential profit. Hopefully we can find some other sneakers today and uh, add to that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it. So another day, another Goodwill trip. And in today's Goodwill trip, we did not find as much as I would have liked. Found this pair of Skechers, not a fan of Skechers, but Skechers do sell well, at least when they're brand new. So something that I was considering, but I ended up not pulling the trigger on because I just couldn't, I just couldn't do that to myself. But uh, after that, we found a pair of Nikes that were incredibly crushed. I've never seen a shoe that was this flattened before. I think it's just because they tightened the laces so tight on the sneaker and threw on rubber bands, and now it just looks like a slipper. After that, I came across a pair of Nike running sneakers. I'm not sure exactly what kind this is, but the color was nice. It was sort of a teal fade to blue, and it had a free outsole, so something that I think maybe I could sell for 20 to 30 bucks, but I'm not sure and I just wasn't willing to take the risk, so I'm gonna leave this pair here for now. And then after that, I found two pairs stacked on top of each other. The first pair was a pair of Reeboks and the second pair was a pair of Nike Pegasus. And I believe this is a pair of Nike Pegasus 32s, maybe? I don't know exactly what kind it is, but in pretty decent condition, just priced pretty high at $12.49. I mean, they were almost in brand new condition, but for 12 bucks, I don't know if the 32s really have any value because we're on the 37s at this point, so I decided to leave them. So I just got my tooth fixed at the dentist and they totally numbed the crap out of my face, so I can't feel anything right here. But I figured I'm driving past Goodwill, driving past Plato's Closet, might as well stop by. Also, this is my new tooth, by the way. But uh, nothing at Goodwill, unfortunately. There was some nice stuff that I would have bought if it was cheaper, but just nothing for the price. So we're gonna hit up Plato's Closet now. Hopefully there's something there that's worthwhile. Otherwise, We'll just go back out again tomorrow. So after my tooth fixing, I decided to go back to Plato's Closet because for some reason it seems to be the promised land when it comes to sneaker reselling. And the first pair that I came across was a pair of New Balance. Now this was a pair of, I believe, 990 V4s. A really nice looking pair of sneakers and a pair of shoes I would love to have in my own personal collection. But unfortunately, it was a much bigger size than my size. So I'm definitely gonna grab it because it's priced at just $15. And for 15 bucks, I'm pretty sure I can sell this shoe for like, maybe 40 to $50, so a definite, definite pickup. Next up, found a pair of LeBrons. This is a pair of LeBron Lowe's. I'm not exactly sure which year this is, but uh, it's in pretty decent condition. Nice gray and orange colorway. I just don't know if it has much value, so I'm gonna leave that pair for now. And then after that, we came across another pair of New Balance 990s, this time the V3s, in also pretty good condition. I was wondering if it was the same person who had both of these pairs, but this pair was a full size smaller. It was a size 10 and a half, so uh, I don't think it was, but both the original gray colorway and both in great condition. I was really bummed that I didn't get to uh, keep any of these for myself, but it is what it is. Once again, came across that pair of Jordans. It still hasn't moved. And then I found this pair of Air Maxes. I believe this is the Air Max something twos. Not exactly sure which model this is, but in really, really great condition. I mean, it looks barely worn, but it was priced at $45. And after looking at comps on eBay, it's selling for exactly that on eBay. So as much as I want to grab this shoe, I just 
can't sell it for a loss. So I'm going to leave this shoe here for now, even though I think it's a great looking pair of sneakers. Then I came across a pair of Russell Westbrook or Jordan Westbrook 0.4s. Now this is the upbringing colorway, I believe, his first colorway in the 0.4s. And this was a size 8 and it was priced pretty well at $40, especially since this shoe is in excellent condition. I mean, the entire upper of the shoe looks almost brand new. It's kind of nuts. And the colorway is crazy. If you like this sort of colorway, this is a great shoe to grab. And again, for 40 bucks, size 8, good size, in great condition. Definitely figured I'd pick it up because I was hoping I could sell it for maybe like 60 to 80. Not 100% sure, but that's what I'm hoping for. Then when I was in the women's section, I came across this pair of Air Jordan 1s. Now this kind of looks like the New Love colorway. I believe it's the Varsity Maze colorway, maybe. But uh, it was priced at 60 bucks, and for a pair of Air Jordan 1s, that's not a bad price. And this is a pretty popular colorway as well, and from what I could tell here, it was in good condition. But then I came across this bin of shoes, and the first shoe that I found in this bin was this pair of Air Jordan 3 Cool Grays, a shoe which just recently released. Now it was a size 14, so it's pretty large, and uh, it also had a very faint smell to it, but um, I was surprised at how good the condition was of this shoe. Now unfortunately it was priced at $125, so it wasn't incredibly cheap, and uh, that's kind of on the border of being very risky, because unfortunately at $125, there is not much room for profit, and uh, if I can't sell it for like $130, $140, then um, I'm just not going to make any money on this pair of sneakers. So uh, as you guys just saw, I went a little bit crazy at Play-Doh's, um, I spent $255. So the sneaker from before this was 307, I think we now have 52 bucks, fast math. I used a calculator, I'm lying about the fast math, I knew what it was. <laughs> but uh, the first shoe that we picked up was actually this pair of Air Jordan 3, it's Cool Grays that just recently released. This is a size 14, and unfortunately it also cost 125 bucks. I was really hoping it didn't say 152, but 125 bucks, size 14, but in remarkably good condition. It's got a little bit of a stink to it, like a tiny bit, like a whiff. <laughs> but I'm hoping I can do something about that. But no, this is a really sick pair of shoes. I'm really, really surprised that I found it for this price. There's a little bit of wear on the heel, but I think I can at least get what I paid for it. It's kind of a risk because I paid a lot for it, but I do think I can get hopefully around 180, 200, we'll see. Next up, we've got a pair of Westbrooks. This is the Westbrook three or four, not sure exactly which one, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, I'm not sure, but in incredibly good condition for only 40 bucks. Size eight, 40 bucks, really, really awesome condition. I think I can sell this for around 100, I'm hoping. Um, but we'll see. Really, really stoked on this pair. Um, and then another pair that I picked up, or two other pairs that I picked up that I was really, really stoked on, were these pairs of New Balances. So I got a size, I believe a size 10 and a half, and a size maybe 11 and a half. I believe this is a 990 V3, but it's an awesome, awesome sneaker, both in the like classic gray colorway, which is so sick. Really excited about these. They're both in decent condition, just could use a little bit of rejuvenator and we should be good to go. But even like the New Balance logo on the heel is still in great condition. Both of these were for $15. So $30, kind of insane because I think I can sell both of these for like $40 each, maybe even more, but probably around $40 each. And then the find of the day, the find that really blew me away was this pair of Air Jordan 1 New Loves in a size, women's size, what? I should really check this before I do the video. 6Y for 60 bucks in, ooh, paint cracking on the toe. I didn't notice that before. I was like really stoked on these. I was like 60 bucks for these, not bad. Does the other one have it or is it just this one? It's a little bit on the other one, but not as bad. But uh, still a crazy good price for this pair of sneakers. I'm kind of bummed about the paint cracking, but I still think I can at least get what I paid for them, which kind of sucks. I was hoping to get like around 140, but uh, now that it's got paint cracking, I don't know. A bunch of sneakers. I have 52 bucks left, so I think I'm done for the week um, because it is Friday. So uh, I'm gonna throw these all up on eBay, hopefully sell them all, and hopefully sell some of the other sneakers we got in stock. And uh, we should have a bunch of money going into next week if everything sells, like a bunch of money. So we can start making like big boy moves. I mean, I feel like this is a pretty big, big boy move, but uh, even bigger. Man, what a day. So after getting home, I cleaned up all the shoes pretty quickly and listed them that night. And the next day we sold a pair and that was the New Balance 990 V3s. Now, originally I bought this pair for $15 and I ended up selling it for $56, which is a pretty great profit. In fact, that's along the same sort of margins as those Air Jordan 8s. Really great price and uh, a really great sneaker in really great condition. Then after fees and shipping, we were able to add $50.06 back into the sneaker fund, which thank God, because I was so nervous. We were down to like $52 after that crazy Play-Doh's haul. And uh, I hate having not much money in the fund because it really prevents us from buying anything. So I'm really glad that we were able to add a little bit of buffer back into the sneaker fund while still having a lot of sneakers in stock. Speaking of stock, we have a lot of sneakers in stock. In fact, we have 10 pairs of shoes in stock, which is kind of crazy. The most we've ever had and uh, 
Unfortunately, I feel like some of these pairs I may have overpaid for. So of course, we have three pairs of youth sneakers. We have the Air Jordan 13 Breads, which we paid $5.49 on. We have the youth Nike Kyrie Fly Traps, which we paid $6.49 on. And then the pair that we picked up in this video was the youth Air Jordan 5s, which we paid $5.49 on. Then after that, we have our first two Play-Dohs pickups. Those are the Pharrell Tennis Hues, which we paid 24, and the Adidas NMDs, which again, we paid 24. Then we have the first pair of Jordan 1s, which we picked up in this week's video. Those were the Air Jordan 1 Mids, which we paid $10.49 for. And then of course, we also have that other pair of New Balances, which we just picked up at Play-Dohs for $15. Then we've got the Jordan Why Not 0.4s, which we picked up for $40, which I'm surprised still haven't moved yet. We've got the Air Jordan 1 Mids for $60, which unfortunately have that toe cracking, which I probably would not have bought them if I had known about that, but it is what it is. And then finally, we still have the Air Jordan 3 Cool Grays, which we got for $125. And for me, this was the biggest regret because this shoe is proving a lot more difficult to sell and the profit margins are very, very low. So if you see this shoe in a Plato's closet in a size 14 for $125, bucks, I probably wouldn't recommend picking it up. So after all is said and done, the total that we have in the sneaker fund at the end of this week is $102.18. But that pretty much wraps up the entire episode for this week. Now I would love to know your thoughts on this week's episode and how you feel like we're progressing in the series so far, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.